hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um, welcome to DK and the Bees Horror Buzz. It's been a long time since we've been on, and we've really, really missed you guys. And I really, really miss my co-host, John. I don't know where John is. Hopefully, he will join us soon. Um, in any case, oh, is he posting? Is he letting me know where he is? I don't know where John is, but um, I do want to welcome you all. And um, as you know, we have a very, very special guest that we've been waiting to get on our show. Um, the amazing Mr. Ken Sagos of Nightmare 3 and 4, Dream Warriors, and all kinds of other things that you may or may not know about this wonderful man. So um, without further ado, I'm going to in invite Mr. Ken to come onto the stage. And here we go. Hey. Yay. All righty. So hello, Mr. Sagos. How are you, sir? Hello, but call me Ken. All right, Ken. All right. No, no mister here. Okay. No mister. Um, Ken, I, family. I, I don't know if you family. can see my little baby Freddy earrings. Yes. I yeah, kind of crazy here. But, um, yeah, it's a delight to have you on. So um, you guys watching, obviously, with Ken being in three and four, we didn't work together, but we did. Yay, and here's John. I'm Hold so on. Sorry. John's yeah. here, too. Yeah, yeah. Yay, John is here. Late. And what's going on, buddy? Long time, my friend. And John, I made it this time. See I how here I am, the one being late. No, see how easy it was? Well, you know what? We've come a long way with our tech skills. <laughs> I still got a long ways to go. Oh, believe but, me, I do too. But at least we know how to get online now. And that's yes. a big step for the both of us. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So, um, oh, James. Hi, everybody. Look at everybody's on here. It's so good to see everybody. So, yes, John, everything good? Do we everything need to ask? Everything is good now. I'm, well, we got stuck an extra day. I was at um, Missouri Comic Con with my guys. We had a snow day. Okay. Got a little bit caught up. We had to stay an extra day because of the weather. And long story wow. short, it's like, oh crap! You, you, you're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, you guys, we have somebody from Australia watching us here. Yay! Good Good uh, Hi, Bella. There you Down go. Under. Lois is there. Let's see. See you in a few weeks. Oh, Days of the Dead. Okay. Um. So, Ken, I don't know if you are able to know, see the comments on the. I am. I want to know how do I respond. Um, well, in the so I, the comments that are here are just the ones that I'm post put, putting up, but there's a ton of them. So if you want to read the comments as we go to the side, do you see where it has comments, no. banners? Mm. But I have it on the wide screen, though. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, but there trust should... me, you don't want me to experiment. Ah, oh, okay. I guess, yeah, we don't want to lose you. Oh, we also have, here we go. We've got Kieran from the UK. I actually met him, right? I met you, Kieran. Yes. I met him too, I believe. Yeah, so it's awesome. we got people from Oregon. We've got, oh, Alabama. Yeah. Wait. Facebook user that says, uh, anyway. Um, it's okay. Maurice McCord. Oh, Maurice is there. Okay, awesome. So, um, yeah, wonderful. So what, what should we talk about first, John, with our wonderful guest? Well, there's so much to talk about with Ken. I'm, I'm finally catching up with him. Um, let's see. Uh, we could easily start off with Nightmare 3 and 4. That'd be easy. Um, and I want to talk about this new comic and these new projects and what you're doing back with the giving back. There's so much with Ken that he's got his hands into since Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. Sure. So what do we do? I say we give well, him a little bit about the experiences on Nightmare 3 and 4, and then we really talk about. Oh, I want that. Oh, look, it's covering up his face. John, how do we, let's oh, see. That, that looks um, good. You can slide. Now. <laughs> no, if we put us. Oh, there you I, go. I, I messed it up there. Oh, yeah. Now you can see Ken. Yeah. Now you can see Ken. So I here mean, we are. We've I'm got Ken. Here. And um, so, of course, everyone knows Ken from as Kincaid. We know him here with the, his team from the Dream Warriors, ever so popular. Um, no, that's the Dream Masters. Oh, this was Dream Masters? Okay. Dream Masters. This was Dream Masters, right. Okay. And that, that and which, that which damn one dog. was that? I still can't that's stand Dream that dog. Warrior. 
that was Dream Warrior. And also, um, and before we answer more any or talk talk too much more, I just wanted to show you guys. I just showed Ken this. This was the one time we had met, Ken and I, and yes. it was literally I don't know at least fifteen years ago, right, Ken? Yes, at least. A long, long, long time ago. I, 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 like I was eight months then. Can you tell? There you, uh, go. you guys haven't changed a bit, though. You can oh, say stop. it every year. Too. Oh, please, I'm joking, please. though. I'm, well, my, going to, I'm going to send you some glasses. <laughs> well, my, well, my hair was I shorter. Mean, to be fair, I do need them. <laughs> yeah, your hair was a little shorter, but I think you guys, I mean, Ken hasn't changed a bit. There's no not recognizing Ken oh, if you walk down God. the street from the, you know, you, you still look the exact same. They're going to be bifocal glasses, too. Well, no, there's just no doubting. <laughs> Kincaid, Ken Sagos, when you see him. I, I mean, and talk about a true class act, a, a true gentleman. I'm one of the first really celebrities that I got to know and really showed me a lot of things, taught me a lot of things, and uh, a huge amount of respect for Ken and what he does. Like I said, there's so much to talk about oh, outside wait. of Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. Like this. Look at this. Yes. Wow. People already. Well, thank you. Yes. So thank for those. You. Those who don't know what we're talking about, the comic. There we go. Oop, I got I can't do two things at once. Wait, I gotta get rid. We need somebody to do our. There we go. I'll pull them up if you want. It's there fine. we go. So what's this? That's one of the original posters that was made. Oh, we want Kent to be. We want Kent to be the bigger dude. John, how do we? we could, there you go. That'll work. <laughs> I love this poster. This is the poster yeah. I personally chose. I love all four of them, though. Yeah. This is amazing. So Ken has um, created out of his amazing mind this whole beautiful. Now we call this a comic or is it a graphic novel? That, say that again. Is it a comic or is it a graphic it's, novel? It's a comic book. It's a comic book. Okay. Wow. It's a comic book. It is a comic book. Look at that. How beautiful. Yes. Look it's at the a deluxe gorgeous. comic book. Okay. And um, so you wrote the story. I wrote the story. And the, the and Socrates is the, Socrates. the killer. Socrates is a African gray parrot bird that has been brought back to life. And he's back to take revenge on those people he had experienced through the centuries of time. Oh, my and, goodness. And he talks. So he can't take revenge on the actual people, but he can take revenge on the ancestors, the descendants of those people. Wow. That's a that's an amazing concept. To totally different than anything we've seen. And he talks. He got a sense of humor. Uh, if you know anything about the African gray parrots, they are the, considered to be the Einstein of the bird world. They can talk. They can play, they can even laugh, they can report, uh, um, do reports, and they can cuss you out. And, and I'm doing the voice of the parrot. Gotta got me, gotta got me. Ooh. I like so, it. So when you say you're doing the voice, so it's a comic, but it's also you're making it into a video then, or? No, I'm making it into a short film, which I'm gonna parlay it into a feature film. And the reason that I'm, I'm going to do a um, short film, first so it can prove that it can be a, a feature film and what i'm doing is that um uh i'm going to use cgi that's what's going to be most expensive i want it to look real i don't want to look like we got some puppet and somebody got their hand up the bird ass talking <laughs> I, want, I want it to be a real bird wow um, so talk, cgi talk. yeah so we've already done some uh, work uh, with a parrot, you know, in front of a green screen. Oh, wow. But, you know, and, you know, and now we want to do it, do some close up. So it's going to be new, fresh, original. And I would like to believe that it's going to be the new villain. That's why it's supposed to say, sorry, folks, but there's a new terror in town. Ah. Um, and his, and his talents, his, grows out like Freddy Krueger. Oh, wow. So it's like a little homage to Freddy. Yes. And also because I actually had the honor of meeting the great, late Mr. 
Alfred Hitchcock when I first came to Los Angeles. And so there's a homage to him. Oh, and awesome. Then I met a uh, Mr. William Morris, uh, William Marshall, who played Blackula. And so there's a homage to him. And of course, you know, Wes Craven, I have to give him homage. So it's a homage to all three of these horror icons. Wow. That I brought together. And I wanted something fresh. People right. want to see something fresh. So I think it's got Jason, it got Freddie, it got all of them piled up into one, even Chucky. Oh, and, wow. And because of, he has a sense of humor too. And, you know, but he loves kids and he's also a hero. But when you make him mad, uh, you make Socrates angry. Angry Socrates kill you. Oh. Don't mess with Socrates. Yeah. yeah. I'm, Socrates I'm sounded a little it. Asian there, Ken. Huh? Socrates sounded a little Asian. <laughs> oh, that's an honor for me because I'm totally ghetto. <laughs> uh, oh, no, it did sound. Oh, Isaac, did he have? Yes. The, if we put them up where they're seeable. I love this poster over here. So so we've got, obviously, we've got our, our um, Jason. We've got Ch Texas Chainsaw. We've got Freddy's Glove. Oh, I see Chucky's Shoe. And then the the Michael Myers, Myers. Did, yeah. Yeah. wow, and Freddie's uh, sweaters under there too. That's amazing. And you got and the, the Candyman, the hook. Oh right, yes, oh, yeah. that's I right. Yeah, right here. Oh, I love the symbolism in it. Where you said, yeah. you know, it's it's a combination, and there's inspiration yeah. from all these characters. So there's meaning to this poster, not just all right, we're putting this in here. It's actually it's, it's mean, I, I, I have to write things. Most people don't know that I was a a staff writer. Uh, for a comedy show, an engineering comedy show. And then I won a Cable Ace Emmy for writing a Disney dramatic show. So <laughs> I've done both. And of course, I don't know if you know, I did stand up as well. Oh, wow. Oh, well, on that note, maybe that's our cue for me to do my horrible, horrible jokes. <laughs> we do have to keep our regular things going. So we have... Um, for those of you who've watched our show before, of course, I, I do three terrible jokes. So let me just, we'll take a pause here um, while I tell my three terrible jokes. Okay. What did one hat, hat right? What did one hat say to the other? <laughs> you wait I, here. You, you don't know? I'll never guess it. You'll I'll never guess it. Ken, do you know it? Hat self. Not hats off. It says, you wait here. I'll go on ahead. <laughs> Get it? I'll go on ahead. Wah, 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 wah. Where's, my, where's our laugh? Here. I'm looking for it. You got the laugh. All right. Okay. All right. Give me a clap for I've tried. Okay. Now, number two. A dyslexic atheist, right? A dyslexic atheist lies awake at night wondering if there really is a dog woof woof well, he's dyslexic so obviously yeah, right? yeah okay thank you thank you what was the answer uh, <laughs> it was that he he was he lays awake at night wondering if there really is a dog woof woof dog so he's okay. an atheist so, and he's dyslexic atheist. so he read it backwards yeah. Oh, okay. 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 It takes a I little bit of the first one I kind of got. Yeah. Yeah. So well, maybe a little better with with the if you saw it in writing. Okay, and then the you're um, on a roll here. Keep going. I, I'm on my roll here. Um. Oh well, well this now one we're covering your face. So let's. I'm going to pull down the Socrates for a second here. Okay. Oh. So, um, what did the pirate say? My agent Peter said, don't use this one. He said it's stupid, but I'm doing it anyway. What did the pirate say when he turned 80? I'm matey. I'm matey. I'm, I'm 80, right? Oh, God. Oh, no, we just lost a viewer on that joke. Horrible. Okay. The I'll last one. The as we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. No, you said three. That's four. That is. That was only three. If I add the fourth one, that'd be four, but we'll, we'll skip the fourth one. 
All right. No, no, don't go ahead on this. Uh, okay, because that other one didn't get a laugh. We forgot to play the laugh on that one. Okay, so the last <laughs> one. Okay. Well, this one, I don't know. This one, Peter liked. My agent liked this one, and I think it's stupid. But anyway, um, did you hear about the worst zoo in the world? It only had one dog in it. It was a shit zoo. <laughs> uh, anyway. Right? Shit zoo. Very terrible. I know. Groaning. Wake up. Wake up, Ken. Wake up. All right. Now that we're done with that horrible thing, my three terrible jokes. We're back to Ken and exciting stuff. So here we go. Ooh. So back to the graphic novel. But they can't see your pretty face either. But this is the uh, second page, right, Ken, in the comic? I don't know what page that is. I mean, that's from, your, that's from the Sago site. I it's, believe it's, it's, it's not. Oh, page. it's 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 midway through the comic. Okay. Because that's when Socrates get after them. Oh, with his hooks and claw. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. They messed so, up. My whole point of today was reading the comic, and I got stuck in a snowstorm. <laughs> oh, did you guys have a snowstorm? Because we're supposed yeah, to be keeping it. Yeah, that's why I'm still at the hotel. Yeah, I was really? back today. Yeah. Oh, so well, you're in. Last week it rained like crazy out here. Oh, really? We we had, we had beautiful weather. Weather. It was like 60 degrees for the last week, and then we got here for the week and got a little chillier. And then last night and this morning, or this morning, started snowing. It came down quick. Wow. Yeah. It is yeah. We're supposed to get the snow. It's supposed to start tonight. Well, tomorrow morning. And they're saying here in New York, it's going to be like um, five to seven inches. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm glad like, I'm not in New York. No. But Ken, so you're I, all sunshine and happiness? Today, yes, it was. It was sunshine. But we was rehearsing in a theater that was cold. They didn't have the heat on, so it was freezing in the theater. Mm. Well, Cal Ken's got that California blood in him, so a slight mm -hmm. wind is going to be a little chilly for him. Yeah, but I'm from the south. <laughs> well, even more warm. Yeah, that's true. Warm. Yeah, you're just uh -oh. used to it. But that's I'm cool. not from up north like you all from. You yeah. all know up to here. That's right? what I'm saying. A slight breeze. I know. I know how it is. Oh. I lived in Florida for a little while, and I got kind of used to it. And when I got to the cold again, it was a little uh, adjustment period for sure. But um, one of the things I want to ask, and I know the fans want to know, because we're excited to talk about Socrates. I'm excited to talk about all these things that you're doing. But I know some of them are I'm just going to – they're going to be asking. They want to know, first of all, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, how you got that role. I know I know a little bit about it, but for the <laughs> fans and, and, and what the experience was on 3 and then returning for 4, and we'll just go from there and let people ask some questions, then we're going to really delve deep into it. Great. I, yeah. I, um, actually, to make a, to go to the short version, um, how I got the role is that my agent was sending me out for an audition. And, you know, back then they had the breakdowns, you know, and the breakdown told you what characters they was looking for. And so the character that I was going out for was a slim bodybuilder. And you know, I looked at my body, that's not what it is. So it was, uh, so he wanted me to go the next day, but I had to go to court. Now the court was on that side of town. The audition was on that side of town and it was raining like cats and dogs and I had no car. So I had to go to court, lost the case, <laughs> and I was so angry when I got to the uh, audition. I had to get three buses to get to it, by the way. So my thing was to get to the audition, go up there, do a horrible reading, and leave because I didn't want to be there. It was clear. I told my agent, I don't want to go. And so when I got up there, it was all these nice bodybuilding guys. And I said, oh, hell no, oh, I ain't can't, you know. So finally, and it was running an hour behind. So finally, when I got in, I had such an attitude. And um, and I told them, a black guy wouldn't say this shit. <laughs> and, so, and they said, well, we'll say it how a black guy would say it. And I cussed the director out. Not directly, but cussed him out. I told him how I would say it. And then after that, he said, thank you. I just knew it. I said, okay. By the time I got home, my agent had called, I don't know how many times. 
He was calling when I walked in the door and he said, what the hell did you do? I said, David, I told you I didn't want to be there. And then he said, they loved you. <laughs> so so I, I guess it was because my attitude is that I didn't want to be there. And that was the, that's what they was looking for someone. And it was actually that scene where we was all around the table where they took me out, Lawrence Fishburne took me out. That was the scene. Wow. And that was before Lawrence Fishburne is who he is. Yeah. They thought I was acting. (laughs) I really didn't want to be there. Oh, that worked out great. Divine intervention. Yeah. Clearly it was meant to be. You got yourself in the character and you didn't even know it. Right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but, but like I said, it didn't work on the next audition, though. <laughs> I thought yeah. maybe I could do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I guess, if you you know, at least try it until it fails. Yeah. So, you know, but, so originally, originally, Ken Cade was a white guy. He wasn't a black guy. Oh, really? Okay. Right. Can you talk I, about the famous wardrobe from the family you wore? The part three, I have always remembered them. The wardrobe, I didn't wear anything. What did I wear? Some, uh, suspenders, red shirt, and jeans. Suspenders, and I didn't want to wear the suspenders. You know why? Uh, because for years, people said I was a mini rerun. Oh. <laughs> and he wore suspenders. And I didn't want to wear the suspenders. And you didn't then, want to, to top it off, my next job was a series on what's happening now. <laughs> Irony. Irony of it. Yeah. For sure, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that must have yeah. been an experience right there, too. I've, I, you know what, I, guys? I've had some wonderful experiences, some experiences that I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade at all. Even it's sunny in Philadelphia. Always sunny in Philadelphia. I love you seeing in that. I'm a big fan of that show. <laughs> There's a story to that one, too. Oh, my God. I can only I, imagine. I never, see, I never watched Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I didn't know what the show was. So when I went in for the audition and I was reading the script and the uh, producers and director was there and I was looking at it and they said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, is this a pilot? And they just bust out laughing because the show had been on for three years. And they, oh, I said, and they kept laughing. They said, oh, you are Larry. And I said, okay, so is this a pilot or not? <laughs> you brought the Kincaid attitude out a little bit of that. Yeah, you know, I mean, and you know what? And it was only one line. All that other stuff is that they let me add in there. Um, I, I love that show. It was so cool just seeing you on it. And, and are you a fan of the show now, or is it just a, a job you? Yeah, did? as a matter of fact, what they was going to do, they was talking about making me a reoccurring character in the show. But I, I don't know what happened. You know, I kept waiting. I'm still waiting. But <laughs> they got a right. podcast now. We're gonna have to get everybody from Doomsday's Crip Wires and Ken on the show. <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah. but they did put they did do another show and they brought me in on it. I don't think it has ever been shown. But those are some those guys were some wonderful guys. I would love to work with them again. Well, they seem well, like it. What about I? I do remember you from. <laughs> Night court. Yeah. Bring me up. Right? Night court. You That's know, one what? of my guys met some of Star Trek people, and he's a huge Star Trek fan. Just you having that picture at some point, I might have to get it and get you an autograph it and give it to him. <laughs> yes, yes, I yeah. do have it. You so do? They, oh, very they cool. always ask me for that picture. Really? Yeah. I, can, oh, I understand, though. It's, I mean, that shows such an I. I mean, that was a show back in. The 80s, 90s, I'd just get home for, you know, in the evenings and sit down and watch that everybody watched. It was such a fun show. It was definitely a fun show. The 80s, guys, the 80s and the 90s, those were some wonderful years for actors. I mean, I'm not saying they're not now, but back then, you know, we had some, we could go in and we could chew off some meat in front of the camera and be able to be a little creative, you know. But now everything is so quick, 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 you know. Uh, yeah. See, one of the things I think about Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 and 4 is because it had a little bit old school in it. And it had a story. Right. You know, uh, and 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 it had some, uh, Nightmare 3 had some of everything and it had, you know, it had something, uh, you know, about the homeless. 
It had, you know, uh, disability. It had everything in it. You know, it had unity. It had love. And, you know, it was different nationalities in there. And there was nothing said about race. Right. No, and they, I mean, none of the characters are similar in, in, yeah, in the Dream characters. Warriors at all. They're all different, but they work together and they ultimately are friends. But you know, one great. of the things that um, Chuck Russell, who was the director, did, uh, before we shot our first scene, we all got together about two or three times at a party. And um, so we got to know each other. So one of the first scenes that we filmed was that a uh, scene in the hospital with all of us together. So we all in real life had an investment in each other mm. and cared about each other. And so it wasn't, so we was a unity. We was a fisk then, and we were sticking together. And so, uh, and I think that's what made it work. Now I had never met Helva Landing Camp. I didn't meet or see Helva Landing Camp until she walked through that door. So that look was very, was real. Right. Because we didn't see her until she walked through that door. Right. What about, what about Robert? Well, well, we couldn't have Robert, you know, Robert was sometimes it took Robert three to four, sometimes five hours to put on his makeup. So we all got a chance to, he was always getting his makeup on when we was in the dressing rooms. And, and then Robert is, he's so different from that character. He's like <laughs> an angel and Freddie is hell. So he- Don't you be calling my boy hell. No, no, yeah, Freddie. Yeah, yeah, he's, you know, he's down there. <laughs> Robert is up here. And so he was like a big brother, a guardian and everything. But when they said action, He came out. Yes. Yes, he did. Well, for me, I never saw him outside of makeup. Like he was. Really? Yeah. Because I was, my character never, um, you know, well, Elm Street 5, I think, you know, went way, way faster anyway than 3 and 4. I mean, you know, we were just this ridiculous shoot every scene. You know, they had like five scenes going on all, all the time. We were running from set to set to set. There just really wasn't a lot of time. And so Robert... Um, probably the only time you'd really have time to hang out with Robert would be if you were in the makeup trailer. But I, I, my character had no makeup, so I was never in it. So every time I saw him, he was already all fully. It was just Freddie. I never really saw Robert. I saw Freddie. Yeah. But um, oh, I have what? Oh, I'm sorry to switch that. I have a comic buddy promoting Socrates Weekly. Oh, awesome! Yes. Yay. We all get out there. We support. Can I'm telling you, and we're going to get more into it. These deals that Ken's getting out. Now we're doing these prizes tonight. But if you go to the Sago's company, you're going to find these bundles. And Ken's doing. You're doing some amazing deals with your autograph. I mean, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And um, you're going to do something special later. I talk yes, to you. yes, we are. We're going to do a few special things with a special guest and a, me running late already on our first show back, DK and the Bees Horror Buzz. This is a, an exciting time yeah, because I don't know if I told you. Can I tell you something else that can, you're going to get? For the first 100, it's going to go into a lottery, and I'm going to sign it, and the winner would get this. <gasps> Let's see. Whoa, look, look at that. that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I it's love going that. To get this. And this. Oh, you got wow. So, yeah, so wow. every 100, um, the first 100, then it'll be the first 200, it'll be something else. The, to, I have to, to raise the... this money for CGI. Right. This, yeah, guys, this all helps Ken out. I mean, we've, Ken gave us all so much in that character as Kincaid, and Ken has been just giving back like his corporation does and the Sago's company. And I'm, I'm not even joking. These deals are incredible that you guys are doing. And if all the fans just come and buy, uh, you know, I, I think, what is it? 20, 25 bucks to get the comic. It's not much at all. And you're getting, all. and you're getting an autograph and it's helping Ken fulfill more of his dreams and get these projects running the way he'd like to get them running yes. and present them and, and make them the way that he wants them made and not cut it in corners. And we right. can help him do that. Yes. 100%. Um, and we will make sure that we'll post after this 
because a lot of people will watch this after the fact, you know, people who couldn't be yes. here for the live, we'll be posting um, links for where you can find um, all of Ken's stuff. So um, be sure to check that out. Um, so one of the things we like to do on our show, we have this, our mystery question. And the reason we do it is because if you do a lot of podcasts, then people have a lot of fans who follow us have heard the same questions over and over. So we like to ask something totally different. Um, so there's three questions. Ken does not know what they are. Oh, thank you, Tristan. Um, Ken doesn't know what the questions are, but he gets to choose between one, two, or three. That's all he, he can do. So Ken. <laughs> and I ahead. do not know. I do not know. No, you do not know what the questions are. Do you want one, two, or three? I'm bold. I want one, two, and three. But go on. You pick. You pick. <laughs> no, you have to pick. Of course, it's going to be three. Okay, there you go. Here we go. Question number three. If you could play the lead role in any film already made, which role would you choose and why? Oh, wow. We already know it's not rerun. No. <laughs> no, not rerun. <laughs> Oh, this is crazy, but I've always wanted to be a sex symbol. But that won't happen. You know, if I take off my shirt, people start gurgitating. But, oh, uh, stop it. Anyway, you can have a body <laughs> double for the naked parts. What? Uh, um, let me see. I, I, I don't know. I think I would want to play a role that Samuel L. Jackson played. You know, no, no. Yeah, that too. But you know who I love? I love um, Jack Nicholson. Mm, so I okay. That role in the, the Jack Nicholson play. I okay. love Jack Nicholson. Any particular a particular role from a particular film? What's the one where he was crazy? Yeah. Um, the Shining. The Shining. The Shining. Ooh. And then, and then um, Denzel and Trading Day. I like that. Um, there's, there's so many. That's not a fair question. Uh -huh, it's I a tough can't one. Narrow, I can't narrow it down to one. Uh, it's a tough one, but okay. Well, that's interesting, though. So, what, we, Jack, um, uh, come on. What did you just say? What film? The Shining. The Shining, yeah. 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 We can see uh, you running around that big old hotel. I'd, I'd love to see Ken doing a little crazy role, you know. Everybody, well, he goes crazy in Elm Street. He gets a little mad, but he's going at the bad guy. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing Ken go a little crazy. I guess as as the voice of uh, Socrates, uh, we might see a little crazy out of him. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. here we go. Ooh, look at that. It, that's not a stuffed real one. That's a. It looks like a printed one. No, it's not. If this was a stuffed real one, Peter would be at me. That's you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You know, actually, I'm someone sent this to me to represent Socrates. Wow. Very cool. So, I got what, me. I got me. so, what gave you so the inspiration? How long ago did you have this inspiration? Oh, about a couple of years ago. I, you know, I, I kept seeing all these remakes of horror films. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I saw the fans want to see something original. So I want to write something that was original, fresh, and new, with a little bit of touch of the new and a little bit of touch of the old. Right. And so I was, I went to a friend of mine's house, and she had this African gray parrot. And every time I would go to the African gray parrot, would just look at me, and when I look at it, it would turn its head. You know. Ooh. And so. She went in the kitchen, and I decided to go up there. You get close to it, and the bird say, Shh, "Get the fuck away!" <laughs> Seriously, it said, "Get the fuck away!" Because she had changed the bird to the curse. No, he said, "Get the fuck away!" And, and so I jumped back, and that night um, I had this dream. It was like. Uh, something hit my window, and it was like a. It wasn't a parrot. It was like a. Uh, it's called it, uh, a crow. Okay. And it scared the shit out of me, so I took that and added that bird, and that's how I came about it. And then I want to put a story to it. 
Right. So there's a story to it. It's not just someone killing. There's a story to it. Right. There's meaning to the killing. Yes. I, and I wanted to do it where it could be a series. Okay. Now you said you'd like to do a short film and then a feature. Are you thinking like with each issue, do a short film for each issue as you go along and then put it into a feature? Well, you know, in, in the way it's Hollywood and the way things are, I want to do the short film to prove myself as a director. You know, because when you know, when you go, you know, be it that you know, when you go in there and you have something, then they're going to say you want to direct. They're going to say, well, do you know how to direct this? Do you know how to direct this? I want to be able to say, bam, just give me your money and leave me alone. So, <laughs> right. Um, but then I, I, I think, I don't think anyone else can see the vision of Socrates better than me. You know, and right. I think that's why a lot of writers become directors because when writers take their artistic work and give it to a director, they either mess it up because it becomes their vision. Right. So I have a vision and a backstory, which mm. I think is very powerful. So I want to make sure that I can keep that vision. Oh my God, Matt, yeah. is this, is it you or is it your sister? Anyway, we're praying so much for you, Matt. And and if this is you responding at that, I it makes my heart sing. You guys, Matt has been really battling for his life right yes. now. Yes, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. So we we are so happy to yes, hear Matt, yeah. that you're doing a little better. The fact that you came on means a lot to me, Matt. It does. Yeah, me as well. You know, yeah. I've been praying for you every day, Matt. So we love you. We love you, Matt. Um, somebody was just asking us. Um, can, There's a who, few if, questions that are really good in here. The one, somebody's already saying Scarefest. They want, yeah, it's Scarefest. I don't blame them. I'd love to see a lot of the Nightmare on Elm Street. I, I want to go. Yeah, I, I want to go there. I don't say, I, I, I sometimes book myself, but I don't know any of the people. Now, I do have someone. I'm basically independent, you know, but I want to go to Scarefest. Uh, is it, what is it, Scares? Something, one of them Scares. But, you know, I go anywhere. I'm on a Socrates make money to do my comic book, uh, my uh, short film now. I want to yeah. see at a lot of conventions. I want to see a lot of the fans here making sure after the show we go and buy a comic from Canada. Yes, support please. this man. Please. Support this man. Let's see this film come to life. Let's 100%. Help. Yeah. He was the dream warrior, you know. Let's let's help him make and, his and, dreams and the come young true. Man, the young man that's playing the lead role in there. I pat on him after Kincaid. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a wonderful young actor. Mm. He's going to be big. Trust me. I'm, I'm so blessed to have him. You know, I don't know yeah. if you have a picture of him or not, but I'm blessed to have him. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't, but um, we don't have that picture on Well, here, you met we? a good one, John. Yeah, John Dodd. Ken's, Ken's one of the great ones out there, and it's he's one of the great ones to be your first celebrity to meet, that's for sure. One of the kindest, coolest people. I, I mean, Ken's one of those guys who's known to give his fans a call if they're supporting him, too. I mean, Ken does some, he loves you guys and he loves to give back. So, you know, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I would call you and thank you, you know, because, you know, the, the thing is, guys, let's, let's be real. I don't care how big or what you say I am. You can call icon, you can call celebrity, or whatever you want to call me. But the fact of the matter is, I am who I am because of you. So you want to call me a celebrity. I want to call you a great, great wind beneath my wings because I can't fly without you. That's 100%. Does it sometimes blow your mind that, you know, what What a difference you could, even you, Beatrice, everybody you, as an actor, a role you play is it's so impactful. Seeing somebody dressed up like Kincaid or, or Mama <laughs> Kruger, I mean, it's got to blow your mind. It's got to blow your mind that, I mean, like for me, I 30 years later, 35 years later, and these people still love you probably more than even back then. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they do. Uh, to see someone walking around dressed like me is something that blows my mind. But let me tell you something else that was not scary, but it was such an honor that on Halloween, to open the door 
and you see a couple of kids dressed like Ken K. They didn't know how they up there. Oh, and how you, fun! You oh, Ken, that was so amazing. Yes. It, wow. It, it, so it has been a great blessing. It has, it's a great blessing, and and that's why I am very humble to call fans and talk to them. And sometimes I call them, and they, they don't believe it's me. So, but that's okay. <laughs> I had a few people say, uh, Ken, Ken called me when you were doing the giving back um, uh, thing with the uh, the donations yeah. for that. And he yeah. was calling everybody that I knew that, that that supported and I'm sure tons of other people that supported. Yeah, nice call. You're just one, like, time, <laughs> one time I would just call it. I didn't know it was overseas and we just talking. That was that was back when you had Yeah, but it me. makes somebody's life. Hey, I just got a call from Ken Sagos and we talked for 15 minutes for for somebody, it makes their whole life like that's a memory that will never leave them, and that's that's a special thing that you have the ability to do, and you do it though, and you do it happily. You say that makes their life, and but it makes my life too. It, it it really does. It makes my life too, and I would call anyone if I have the time. I made a pack that I was going to call a fan, you know, every week. If I get them, I just go call them. You know, sometimes I like to call them just to hear them say, yeah, sure, right, and hang up. But <laughs> but it's just the thought of where it is. And that's why I I really enjoy what I do. I enjoy you. So I know I just want people to know that it's, it's a circle of life for me in this industry to meet people and to talk with people. And that's, I'm real. And that's because I grew up and didn't have anything so what I have now is always more than what I had. So I'm blessed. Well, I mean, what you the characters that you are as people in real life, not the characters you played, but the people that you guys are in real life, on top of what you did, going to these conventions, it, it makes their day. Because you guys are yeah. the type of fans, and I've seen Beatrice with fans, I've seen you with fans. It's not like hey, I'm signing an autograph and get out of here. You're going to talk to them. And make them their day, and you're genuinely talking to them and asking them questions yeah. and talking about things. It's not like, oh man, how long do I got to talk to this person before I can get rid of them? Or, I mean, you genuinely no. like to in, in, interact oh, and engage. No, no. With them. You know, fans who do that is there for the money. Yeah. I'm there for the fans, and if the money comes, it's good. But if I'm, I can make fans laugh, I leave there rich. You know, but yeah. it makes a full circle, sure. especially now with the full internet. Circle. And yeah. now, like I'm learning it. Now you're getting on live shows. You're you're understanding how to get live, and it's really simple. They every day it gets easier yeah. with technology too. And now you can reach the fans Thank on a bigger, you. broader spectrum, which is you know great. The fans love it, and you know I, I I don't think horror has been as special since the '80s as it is now. Right, and that's what I and I want to bring that feel back. You know, and I'm gonna tell you something. I avoided horror for a long time. I had to learn to appreciate it, to appreciate what horror was all about. I had to learn that horror had its own door of reality, its own door of entertainment. You know, I wanted to do the dramatic film, you know, you know, to be or not to be. Fuck that shit. Horror, <laughs> let me shut up. Now I won't, now I won't get in a role. But it has its own thing. But the other thing is, is that you cannot, you cannot outbeat the love and the support and the unity of the horror community. Right. So true. It's got to be different. In the 80s, it was kind of taboo to be in horror movies as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, I mean, the next step was porn or something, you know, in people's yeah, that's. But, yeah. you know, you guys are the ones who are, I think, more embraced than, you know, a lot of. 80s action heroes and stuff like that. Like people are talking about you guys more. You know, Ken Sagos, Linnea Quigley, Beatrice coming back. Everybody talks about her. Like the horror community loves to see you guys and the way you guys get back. And I know Beatrice over here had the same thing where she went through that horror phase where now, you know, she's just like you. She embraces it because not only the fan, but the joy you bring to the fans and how much yeah. it does for people. It's crazy what horror really does. And when you go to these conventions, and you see so many different people like Nightmare on Elm Street 3 getting along and having fun and interacting. And none of that other stuff is worried about. You just go and have a great time with people. Yeah, I, I know that 
the Nightmare Three and Nightmare Four, you know, we it's it's a family, it's a family. So, and it was because of we don't see each other every day, every week, or even every month. But when we we do see each other, it was like we saw each other yesterday, and that's what is important, you know. And we respect each other. And if I someone call and they want to see me, I, I'm happy to recommend one of my uh, horror uh, castmates. You know, it's yeah. a wonderful family. Wonderful. I've seen that. And it doesn't even matter which part it's. It seems yeah. if you guys are in the Nightmare on Elm Street family, you yeah. guys are in the Nightmare on Elm Street family, and that's. That's great. I was happy. I got to meet Heather last, yeah, a few months back for the first time, and I'm going to be seeing her in Chicago with another guy and a bunch of the cast too. Yeah. Right. We're we're to, we that. got to have a, we got to have a nightmare prom. <laughs> I think so. I <laughs> think all right? of the nightmare people we come together and have a big party. Don't you think? I think, think, think one hundred percent because, you know, each time you know I've I've been meeting more and more at the conventions. You know, I get to meet more and more of the other film cast you know and we always we always get along and it's always you know it is it's it's a family within this family and and can i think you know a lot of us mo not i won't say most all of us but a lot of us in the elm street um franchise were not horror fans necessarily when we first right. were cast in it you know but it's through the fans that we learned to really embrace and love it because we learned how cathartic these horror films can be for people and, and the place that they've held for people growing up, you know, and, you know, I, I, I've come to, to learn, um, and can tell me if you agree that, um, you know, if people have a trouble, troubled childhood, um, or, or were bullied or face trauma, you go in two ways. Either you go towards just happy, happy, um, which I tended to do. Like I would try to see something super happy, you know, see the loving families, try to avoid anything that had a sad ending. But then there's other people that dive right into it by going into horror and, yeah. um, you know, facing the facing their fears and identifying either with the, the final girls or boys, you know, to you, people that defeated their foe and or the foe himself, you know, a lot of times people identify with Freddie or, or Michael or yeah. Jason, you know, that they could still, that they, it empowers them to be able to defeat others, you know, and, um, and, and just sort of, and then there always is that, that thing at the end where somebody does survive and it's usually by facing their fears and, yeah. you know, so, you know, and I think, Ken, we're about the, well, I think we're about the same age, maybe not. I must be older. I'm the old lady of the group. But anyway, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, back in the 80s, horror was always kind of like poo-pooed. But, you know, now we're just seeing that it really has such a beautiful place yeah. for people, you know. Um, yeah. The, well, yeah. Yeah. the 70s, 80s kids now have kids and, and yeah. you know, you know and, and it just gets passed down. And now their kids love these movies. And there's yeah. just something special and magical about um, you know, horror in general, but especially 80s horror. Yeah. Okay, well, so um, so here we have all our, the 70, what was it? Well, that's a list and a half. Yeah, there were 72 people that made it before the, the countdown. Um, uh, we, closed, we closed at 9.30 Eastern time, and here's everyone's names, and I will shuffle it so they're not necessarily in, in, uh, I'm jealous of the winner. I almost that's why I was late. I was contemplating if I wanted to get on the wheel and try to win these this right? these prizes tonight. These are great. Yeah, so um what was this, John Thomas? I was a kid when I saw the dream child and now B looks younger. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. <laughs> so um John, do you want to tell us what our first spin is gonna be for? Um uh, let's see, should I, I'm gonna if I had a coin on me, I'd flip it. We're gonna go. We're going to go with your prize first so we can do Ken's last since he's our guest. I think that's the best way to do it. Sounds good. Okay, cool. so for the first spin, the winner of this. I say you end? the fifth person off the wheel or however you do it wins, and then we'll do either three or four for Ken, whichever he decides. Okay. And we we'll, could do, we'll that. do like three and eliminate. And that, because it'd be tough to eliminate 71 people. I know. I know. So what. The first bundle is going to be my book, The Kruger's Curse, 
the Nightmare Before Elm Street, a $50 item, because I will be signing it. It's the whole backstory to Nightmare on Elm Street with wonderful illust illustrations. Um, and it will be personally signed to you along with this photo from Elm Street, um, signed as well, and a five minute phone call with me. Oh my goodness, you guys are getting spoiled tonight. So that's the <laughs> that's the B, the, the Amanda Kruger package. So again, it's for the photo, the book, and a five minute phone call with me. Um, and we are going to spin the wheel and you said, what was it, John? We'll do the five. We'll eliminate the fourth and the fifth one will win that prize, and then Ken could decide three or four for himself. Okay, so um, hold on one second here. Uh, you guys, okay, after the spin, uh, we will first say you are eliminated. Oops. For the first, the for the first ones, right? Yeah, yeah. first. The first four, and then the fifth one will be the winner. Okay. All righty. Here we go. Be the dream child winner. Okay, guys. So, so again, we're going to spin the wheel five times. The first four times, if your name comes up, unfortunately, you're going to be eliminated. <laughs> and then, um, then the fifth one that you will win. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? And go. <laughs> Brandy Lee Curl Ogle is removed. Thank you for playing. So now we're down to 71 entries and we will spin it again. You got a one in 71 chance. Better than the lottery though. Okay, here we go. Eliminate them from the chance. Yes, that's to eliminate from this giveaway. Uh, that's from B's giveaway, the first one. Can we add them back on after? Like for your for Ken's or if you're no. eliminated, you're eliminated. Uh, yeah, I because think, now they're gone from the yeah. list. So well, I don't we need to do it. But hey, just getting picked on the wheel with 71 is pretty cool. You're pretty close. Right. I know. It's kind of a weird. Okay. Our third elimination is. Skylar Simon Davis. All right. All right. Take care, Matt. Matt Young uh, says he's going to sleep, but um, love you, Matt. Stay strong. We're praying for you. Okay. So that was three. This is the last elimination round. Okay. Let's see. All right, so Ashley is removed. Oops, I have to do it over here. Okay, and then I just have to change so that you are the oops winner for the next one. Okay, so this is it, you guys. This is the third one. This is um to win the Beatrice bundle, okay? So here we go. Free phone call with me and my book and... Sam Bianchi. So now Sam Bianchi has to be on. Is Sam here? Is Sam here? You've got one chance. Congratulations to Sam, but that's if Sam is here. So Sam Bianchi, if you are watching, you need to put in a comment, please. Otherwise, we roll again. Sam Bianchi, I didn't see that name on here. Did you? Did anyone else see him? I didn't see him. All right, let's see if he's here. We'll give people him. Are a, saying, people are saying congratulations to Sam. However, I'm not hearing from I, I, Sam. Yeah, I'm guessing they're saying congratulations out of out of courteousness, but I don't know if they, anybody knows he's here. We'll give him 
Sam, going seconds. once. Come on, Sam, make a comment. Just say, oh, I'm here. Sam, come on, Sam, come on, Sam. This is a call and a book from Mama Kruger. Oh, guys. So, I'm got sorry, him. guys. We're almost out of time, and we got to get to Ken's, too. So, yeah. Sam, I'm sorry you are removed. But this means that you guys have a, one more chance to win my book and my photo and a phone call with me. <laughs> and Chris just, oh, met, he just commented. Look at that, Chris. You won. Look, just for saying something, you won. Say <laughs> something. Chris, okay. Hey, you we said something before it even landed. Did he like knew he was going to win? We're, we're proud yeah, of you. Woohoo! So, congratulations to Chris. Okay. How do we say it? Okay. So, um, a big congratulations to Chris. Chris, um, I will, okay, I afterwards, um, I will text you. I hope we're friends. Are we friends? If we're not friends, you have to read. We are friends. Awesome, Chris. So, um, I will. Uh, find out your details and get you your goodies. Okay, fantastic. So we have our first winner. Now for our next amazing bundle that you've all been waiting for. John, do you want to tell them what's in the... the... Man, the myth, legend. Actually, I'm going to let Ken tell them since it's his book. You tell them what they're getting. Okay, you're going to get a book. And I'm going to autograph this book. And... Um, I think, oh, and I'm going to give them a poster, that poster that you see. Ooh, Long awesome. And I'm going to sign it. Wow. And I'm going to give you, inside that, I'm going to give you this button that says Socrates. Oh, I'm, wow. Man, let me see how to do it. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. And I'm going to sign it. That and is... The bungle. That is. I'm gonna sign all three. Woohoo! So oh, a book, a prize. his book, his poster, and and the pin, all signed by the one and only Ken Sagos. That is freaking amazing. Can I enter the wheel? Can I put my name in there too, John? <laughs> I to. That's why I was running late. I'm like, oh man, maybe I gotta get on that wheel. I know. I want to be in the wheel. I want to be in the wheel. All right, Ken. So here we go. You guys ready? So we have uh, 66. It's down to 66 people. So you've got a better chance, folks, if you've stuck around. But you have to be here to win it. Be in it to win it. Here we go. So, oh, wait. We're eliminating. Oh, th three or four, John. Uh, that's up to Ken. You want to go three or four, Ken? Three. Three. Oh, sorry. So... I'm not the winner. I, I, I would change the words. Okay, sorry. So we got to remove. It says you are the winner, but you are not the winner. You're the winner of the elimination round. <laughs> you you got to be eliminated. I'm sorry. I know. Sorry. Um, all right. And then I, I I'm not going to change the words again. But the second one, you'll you have a second chance to be the elimination winner. <laughs> so our second elimination winner is. Tom Smith. Tom Smith. I don't know if Tom Smith is on here because I haven't seen that name, but either way, Tom Smith is removed. So drum roll because this is going to be the winner of this amazing package, right? Here we go. Who is going to win the Good Ken luck. Sagos package bundle? <gasps> oh my God. Justin! Oh my God, Justin! Can you believe it? Oh, that's so amazing! Because Justin, I'm telling you guys, Justin signed up. Then he texted and said, "Oh, did I sign up correctly?" And then he went online to get his name on there, and he said, "Did I do that correctly?" And he was so worried whether he would get this or not. The only other problem, though, is you better still be on here. Yay! There you are, Justin. Woohoo! Right, Justin's wait. here. Congratulations. And I think, John, you're going to get the information for me. Yeah, yeah. Justin, you can hit up me or Beatrice. We're going to get all the information. 
you're going to get that awesome bundle set and you're going to get a phone call from Ken Sago. That's right. Cool. I'm going to call you. Oh, you're going to get a phone call with him too. Woohoo. That is a quite the prize you guys. So we congratulate um, our two amazing winners, which is Chris Oke and Justin Harvey. Congratulations, you two. And um, oops. there we go. And um, yeah, very, very nice prizes. So, you know, D can be, it's always a good time here. Yeah, yeah. Was, this was a, you know, I've been having such a great time. If there's I only one it. problem with this though. What's uh -huh. that? I don't want to go, but I understand. No. Well, you you, hey, that, I want to stay. I want that to means that you invite me back, right? Well, I want you to come back. You're always welcome on the yeah, show okay. with with me and Beatrice. We'd yes. we'd love to have you back. You're one of the the really great people out there. Guys, go out there. I dropped the links. The Sago Company. Check it out. Grab a comic. Grab an autograph. Very affordable. Same thing. BeatriceBuffley.com. You can grab a book. Nightmare Before. Uh, of Krug, Nightmare Before Elm Street. <laughs> before I, I Christmas? Be, I was ready to say Christmas again. I know. I've, I said that's what I said. And uh, by Beatrice, amazing book that ties in everything as Mama Kruger and Freddie in the Socrates movie. Let's get this movie made. Let's help him raise this money. Oh, so Ken, maybe we should do a tradey tradey. I'll, yes. give you, I'll give you mine if you give me yours. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And just Ooh. remember that everyone who buy a book, you go into the lottery to win this that is so cool look you at that automatically, you automatically your name will go in there and right you know and we're maybe we can come back here and you can make the drawing well that we would be also, fun i wanted yeah. to say something too because chicago we're at days yeah. of the dead like i mentioned yes i'm bringing those paintings that i had done that we had at the crypticon kansas city yes. the first time i met you yes. and we're going to do something with them because I want to do something, raise some money, uh, raise something for yeah. some whatever cause we decide to do. But we'll get something together. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see you, man. Yes. It's been a while. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. So we're so thrilled to have had Ken on. It just seemed like it just this hour just slipped by before we even really got a chance to even ask too many questions. But it is wonderful to have you here. The fans have been so excited to have you on, and we we are so excited to have you on. Um, and we, all of us, want to thank you, you fans. We want to thank everybody for watching, thank and you. those of you who will watch us later um, as we run it as, as well. And uh, John and I are super happy to be back. Um, yes. Am I the first for the year? You're, You're the, the first, first of the year. We yeah. saved the best You're for the first. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. You can't beat that. Yeah. So again, we will be posting um, the links for for uh, Ken um, uh, underneath this, and um, you can rewatch it and watch him over and over again if you would like. And we we will absolutely have Ken back on. Um, and we we apologize to those of you who we weren't able to answer your questions. Um, what I do and Ken might do if he's got time um, is after we the live is over, then we have time to we can go back through and look at all your comments. I'm on Facebook and we will we can answer questions there because a, a lot of times to. I would love to. Yeah. So because a lot of times when it's alive, it's just really hard to get through everybody's answers, everyone's questions. It's hard to read them and talk to you guys at the same time. So but we will read every single one of your comments. We're so happy you're here. Um, we love your love and all that good stuff. And I apologize for my bad jokes. <laughs> oh, we love your and, bad jokes. And in the words of in the words of Socrates. Gotta love me. <laughs> there you go. We all love you, Ken. We yeah. are all excited for you. We're wishing you the best. Um, Thank you. And and we're all hoping, if you guys are at a convention, you know to go visit Beatrice or Ken. Make yeah. sure you support them. Make sure you say hi. And, uh, you know, thanks again, Ken. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye.